welcome to uh, lecture number 34 of this groundwater hydrology course. In this lecture number 20, uh, 34, we will cover saline water intrusion in aquifers topics to be covered are geochemical investigations, control of salt water intrusion and practical modeling of salt water intrusion. In geochemical investigations, uh, we can use certain parameters uh, to identify whether uh, the salt water intrusion has happened uh, in a particular aquifer or not. So, seawater has got seawater as a uniform chemistry due to the long residence time. of the major constituents. So, main point is that predominance of chloride and sodium predominance of chloride and sodium with molar ratio of 0.86. If uh, the aquifer is not anthropogenically polluted, the fundamental if the aquifer is not anthropogenetically uh, polluted, the fundamental fundamental cations uh, calcium and magnesium and to a lesser extent uh, 
the alkali ions sodium and potassium the fundamental cations are mostly this calcium magnesium and to lesser extent they are alkali uh, ions sodium and potassium so to identify the salt water intrusion uh, different uh, indices or parameters can be defined. The first one is uh, salinity. Salinity. So, time series of steadily increasing increasing chloride concentration uh, can indicate the early evaluation uh, evolution of the early evolution of a salinity breakthrough from Sri water. Next parameter is uh, chloride to Br ratio. Cl uh, or chloride Br uh, ratio can be used as a reliable tracer because both uh, CL and BR are usually behave uh, conservatively, so CL and BR this behave conservatively, and in case of uh, sea water this Cl to Br ratio this weight ratio is approximately 297. Uh, for anthropogenic sources like wastewater uh, effluent or sewage sewage effluents this cl by br ratio is up to 800 up to 800 
the third parameter is sodium by chloride ratios. Sodium chloride uh, ratios of salt water intrusion are usually lower than the marine values, which is uh, less than 0.86 molar ratio. The fourth parameter is calcium, magnesium or you can have calcium with bicarbonate and sulphate. So, these two ratios in sea water uh, indicates uh, with a uh, high salt water intrusion if it has got value greater than 1. So, high calcium magnesium ratio or calcium bicarbonate plus sulphate ratio both are greater than 1 indicates sea water intrusion. Other than this, uh, you have oxygen and hydrogen isotopes stable oxygen and H isotopes. can be used to describe the mixing process between sea water sea water and fresh water fresh groundwater aquifer is generally depleted in both and D 
they have tritium relative to sea water. Mixing of fresh water fresh and sea water should result in linear uh, correlation. The last one is boron isotopes. One of the process that modify the chemistry of seawater intrusion is the adsorption of potassium. adsorption of potassium, boron and lithium onto clay minerals in the host aquifer. These uh, elements are relatively depleted in saline associated, uh, saline water associated with sea water intrusion. So, elements are relatively depleted in saline water associated with sea water intrusion. Thus, uh, this boron isotopic composition uh, can be used uh, for identification of salinization sources. In particular, to distinguish from anthropogenic contamination such as uh, wastewater. So, uh, boron isotopic composition of groundwater can be used as a tool to discern the salinization zation 
sources. So, these are the parameters uh, with which uh, salt water intrusion can be identified. Uh, next thing is that uh, in density dependent flow, uh, the density depends on density depends on the reference density, reference density. Uh, temperature and uh, concentration. Similarly, dynamic viscosity is also a function of uh, density or dynamic uh, reference dynamic viscosity, temperature and concentration. So, these two can be treated as equation of state for solving the both flow and transport equations. So, for the governing uh, to solve this salt water intrusion or saline water intrusion process, we need to use density dependent flow equations and flow equation is density dependent that means, there is a relationship between this hydraulic head with density and uh, these equations can be solved in a coupled sense. So, the first equation is uh, the flow equation. So, this is a normal density rho 0 is the reference density, f is the storage coefficient, h is the hydraulic head or total head, t is uh, time. So, this is time dependent term. Then we have this is permeability tense or uh, hydraulic conductivity tensor. This is uh, this defines uh, the axis direction because in z direction we need to consider one extra component in case of Darcy's law. This q star uh, this rho star is the density of injected or extracted uh, source or sink uh, and q is the discharge rate of source or sink and this is the transport equation. So, this uh, density is related to this uh, concentration with the relationship that defines that uh, this density is basically rho naught plus 1 plus your epsilon or alpha divided by C s, where this alpha is basically 1 rho s minus rho not divided by rho not and this is the density of <coughs> sorry, uh, water ground water this is reference density this is uh, density uh, ratio or relative density difference so if we take uh, uh, usual values then this rho naught is 1000 kg per meter cube 
1000 kg per meter cube, then rho s is 1025 kg per meter cube, thus uh, this alpha or den relative density difference uh, ratio that becomes zero to five uh, and uh, the C S which is usually uh, concentration of sea water that determines uh, the whole thing. Now, in this transport equation, uh, in this transport equation, this theta is moisture content, the C is a concentration, this is again uh, the temporal or time dependent term, this is advective term and this is diffusive term, this is also uh, alpha prime is the modified uh, compressibility term, uh, theta is again moisture content, concentration, this is total head, Q is the uh, discharge rate for source and sink and C in is the concentration of uh, incoming or outgoing that means injection or extraction rate. Similarly, the Q star, uh, uh, this rho star is the density of uh, the inject uh, injecting or uh, extraction related fluid. So, these are the terms which are there in the transport equation. Now, as we have seen that the density uh, is related to the reference density, density is related to reference density with the relationship rho and rho naught with 1 plus alpha and this is concentration divided by C s. So, we can easily see these two equations are uh, interrelated and it can be solved only in coupled sense. So, uh, as because there will be salt water intrusion in coastal aquifers, so we need to take some kind of counter measures. So, one thing uh, we can do is that we can manage the demand by managing the demand itself we can uh, we can uh, counter uh, uh, this is one kind of counter measure for the salt water intrusion management. So, then non portable water reuse. So, non portable water reuse is the second measure. Third one is the modified pumping rates. So, we can have modification uh, related to pumping rates and the, with the modified pumping rates only we can uh, control the seawater intrusion. Then pumping caps. Uh, with the pumping caps uh, also we can control the uh, salt water intrusion. Well relocation, let us say that we have a well which is near to uh, seashore or uh, near to uh, your shoreline, then it is obvious that there will be extra uh, pumping uh, from those wells and due to those pumpings, uh, there will be intrusion of seawater 
and at a faster rate uh, and if we relocate it uh, in the inward direction then at least we can check that sea water intrusion in the coastal aquifers. Then conjunctive views, conjunctive views is that we can use a uh, different combination of surface water, ground water so that uh, people uh, can use a percentage of ground water from their coastal aquifers and a percentage from surface water source or nearby rivers. So, that way uh, the people will not be that much dependent on the ground water aquifers or coastal aquifers and uh, we can check the salt water intrusion. And the first one uh, and the last one is the aquifers uh, storage and recovery. So, aquifer storage and recovery uh, is the most important one because we can store water in a certain aquifers and we can extract that water in future. That way uh, if that is connected to uh, the sea water, uh, the sea water uh, phase then it can be uh, uh, it can act as injection barrier also if it is not hydraulically connected with the aquifers. So, we can store good quality of water in the aquifers and we can reuse it uh, in future. So, tapping alternate aquifers let us say that there is uh, saline water intrusion, saline water intrusion uh, in this particular aquifer then uh, one can try to tap a lower aquifer which is not hydraulically connected or not that much affected due to uh, saline water intrusion. So, that way uh, we can control uh, the sea water intrusion. Uh, basically, it is by reducing the demand from this particular aquifer and we are transferring that uh, extraction from a different aquifer or a, uh, we are transferring that extraction thing to a different aquifer. Next is extraction barrier. Let us say that we have a sea here, then saline ground water, this is our fresh water and this is our production well. So, and this is another barrier well which is near to your coast and this is our initial ground water table. So, if we start pumping there will be a movement of this saline ground water towards the fresh water, uh, fresh ground water or fresh water aquifer and this uh, barrier will, will act as some kind of semi barrier thing and it will reduce the sea water intrusion effect by pumping uh, saline water from uh, the pumping wells and we can safely use our production well uh, for some amount of extraction, but there should be sufficient limits or uh, there should be caps so that 
we can check the salt water intrusion. So, this is the original interface and now this is the final interface after uh, the sea water intrusion. Then scavenger wells, so these wells are deep wells and uh, these wells are meant so that we can arrest the total uh, saline ground water and it goes up to full depth. So, this is our final ground water table, this was our initial one. So, we can safely extract water from the production well uh, uh, from our fresh water aquifer. Injection barrier, with the injection barrier uh, in case of barrier well we have already seen that uh, there is extraction barrier. Now, we can use the same barrier well as uh, injection barrier, we can inject water into these barrier wells. So, that water will spread into this aquifer and it will reduce the effect. Although uh, this movement is shown uh, towards C, but uh, this is in a scaled up uh, this is a scaled up view, there will be a smaller effect or smaller uh, retreat towards the sea. Now, another point is land reclamation, with the land reclamation as this is our ground water table and this is our sea level we can have uh, a different interface position with the land reclamation. So, that may uh, reduce some kind of sea water intrusion effect. And uh, next one is the impermeable barrier. So, impermeable barrier is basically uh, uh, made by injecting bentonite slurry or highly uh, uh, some kind of material. So, that the porosity uh, the pores are filled with that material and the hydraulic conductivity will be reduced uh, drastically. So, with this kind of impermeable barrier in position, there will be reduced effect uh, and there will be slow movement towards this production well. So, by this method also we can check the salt water intrusion towards coastal aquifers. Then Another one is the surging pit. So, surging pit this wall is basically this wall is basically uh, uh, impermeable and these two walls are uh, permeable walls and water is filled in this surging pit and it is just parallel to the coast. So, with high velocity if we pass the water then the saline water intrusion effect can be reduced. This is the production well and there will be reduced effect. So, this is basically one kind of uh, uh, recharge effect and impermeable boundary effect. 
So, our goal uh, is uh, to maintain uh, the quality and quantity. So, we need some kind of careful planning of withdrawal strategies for control and remediation. Remediation uh, not in true sense, but we can uh, easily control the salt water intrusion uh, with different type of countermeasures. So, now I will discuss one case study of uh, Nellore district in coastal Andhra. So, coastal aquifer of Andhra Pradesh that is in Nellore district. So, these are two mandals Alur and Vidavalur situated in the Nellore district and uh, we have taken these two mandals for uh, salt water intrusion modeling and control. So, objective where collection of all head concentration pumping data for the study area along with boundary condition and parameter estimates. Next is implementation of a three dimensional finite element based numerical salt water intrusion model for the coastal aquifer uh, study area and calibration of the developed model for the study area and predicting the future salt water intrusion scenarios and evaluating the management strategies for possible control of salt water intrusion. So, this is the study area and total area is 355 kilometer square. Uh, this is the boundary uh, between Alur and Vidyavalur. So, uh, to model this kind of uh, coastal aquifer regions, uh, basically these are having uh, one coastal boundary that is Bay of Bengal, one is Penna River boundary, another two boundaries are political boundaries that is Alur Mandal boundary and Vidavalur uh, Mandal boundary. And this black dots, uh, these indicates the location of pumping wells. Generally, uh, 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 we have uh, allocated these pumping wells in such a way that it represents the pumping scenario of uh, each of the villages. These are the villages which are situated in these two mandals. So, uh, in a particular village there can be more than one pumping well but these are basically representative pumping wells for the study area. So, number of villages in Alur Mandal is 15, Vidavalur is 10. So, area wise is Alur is bigger and normal rainfall uh, is almost same and the major crop is paddy, uh, but recent a uh, few years uh, there has been shift uh, in the cultivation uh, aspect. So, this is the basic stratigraphy of the study area uh, with the RL values from different sources uh, this model was prepared these are the pumping wells, these are basically strainers and it has been found that bedrock was not encountered even at drilling depths ranging from 250 to uh, 500 meters. So, we have considered the top portion only for modeling. 
So, first thing is that we have considered 12 meter thick sand layer, then second one is uh, 3 meter thick sandy clay and the last one is sand layer with 15 meter thickness. So, assumptions uh, that were made because uh, of non availability of some of the data sets. Recharge rate uh, in the form of infiltration is taken as uh, 15 percent of the normal rainfall in that particular period. The river boundary is assumed as no flow as Penner river remains dry most part of the uh, year in this region. Although there is some amount of discharge, but we have assumed uh, it is a no flow boundary or not contributing to the study area. Seasonal fluctuations are not considered, tidal effect is not considered. Uh, then the pumping and recharge rates are averaged over the year, the total value uh, is the total pumping occurring over the year. And you already know uh, this is the equation. Uh, in case of epsilon there was alpha. So, this is a 3D view uh, of the study area and uh, this is with finite element mesh and you can see that for dropped values the maximum dropped value assigned for a particular well is uh, this much and minimum is this much. And in case of Vidavalu, it has been found that drafts are very high. So, you have increased the draft uh, based on the population and uh, other data. So, calibration and validation, the calibration process is carried out for the time period between 2000 July 2002, July 2002 and simulated and observed head and concentration values are compared with the July 2001, July 2002. The model is then validated for July 2003, 2004 mainly in the head in terms of head values and as estimated data is very scanty for 2003 and non-existent for 2004. Longitudinal dispersivity uh, is considered as 50 meter and lateral dispersivity 15 meters. So, calibration trials uh, with sand layer with a particular uh, hydraulic conductivity values, it has been found that the upper uh, region and the lower region it is not matching and also in upper region there is some kind of deviation, but not that much, but in the lower part it is not completely matching. It may be uh, due to the parameter values or due to uh, the boundary conditions. So, ground water modeling is basically it is uh, either you can adjust the boundary condition or depending on the actual values or if you do not have that you can try to uh, adjust the parameters to get the actual value. So, calibration trial 2 in that one also it has been found that there is deviation in the lower portion or Vidavalu region and in third trial also uh, it is not matching. So, uh, in case of 2001 uh, it is almost matching with the actual one. So, it has been found that simulated and 
observed values are uh, well uh, in this uh, 45 degree line and simulation for 2001. So, simulation difference, so concentration scenario difference is only here in the internal portion. Uh, this is the observed one and this is a simulated one and simulation for the 2002 also it has been found that observed and simulated the middle portion only there is some kind of deviation. And uh, the simulation for 2003 also it is uh, found that there is some kind of deviation for that same region. And simulation for uh, 2009 with the existing pumping pattern, this is the scenario, but it has been found that uh, internal region we have uh, high concentration values. This is due to the fact that there can be some kind of inland uh, salinity for uh, this region. So, three scenarios are considered for control of salt water intrusion. So, in uh, Vidavalu region the five uh, wells are considered near to well uh, near to seashore then it has been found that there is decrease in uh, concentration for a reference point 1 with that scenario. Again near uh, the Allur uh, Mandal uh, if 5 wells are installed uh, as uh, extraction barrier wells then for the reference point also there is increase in concentration level, but the uh, rate is much slower uh, as compared to, to the existing pattern. So, scenario 3 if 3 uh, 5 wells are installed within that uh, inland salinity portion then uh, also there will be uh, increase uh, there will be decrease in uh, concentration values for that region. So, this is a comparison of uh, concentration for 2009 um, scenario 1 and 3. The scenario 4 also same thing has been experienced. Uh, we can have two objectives for any salt water intrusion management model that is production well, extraction barrier well. This is the uh, ground water flow transport equation uh, which relates the concentration with the flow transport relationship. There should be some kind of uh, some kind of limit on concentration that means, uh, the concentration in the region should not exceed some value. And the pumping there should be cap uh, on the pumping values and uh, this is basically maximizing the uh, uh, pumping from production well, minimizing the pumping from extraction barrier wells and both uh, pumping from production well and pumping from uh, barrier wells these are bounded variables. So, that way uh, one can formulate the management model for salt water intrusion and uh, it can be solved uh, for any particular aquifer. So, this is the end of uh, salt water intrusion uh, uh, saline water intrusion modeling and basically uh, geochemical uh, investigation, control of salt water intrusion, practical modeling of salt water intrusion and last we have uh, uh, 
uh, discuss this uh, management aspect of salt water intrusion. Thank you.